name's Conrad Steiner. I'm a doctor of medicine. The story has the title, General Practitioner. Guardian of birth, healer of the sick, comforter of the aged. To the profession of medicine, to the men and women who labor in its cause, this story is dedicated. Our presentation, the field of general practice. The object in point, a medical diploma. The case in point, Terence Canfield, MD. He's 43 years of age, married, no children. He's been an MD for 13 years. This is a simple, straightforward account of one day in the life of Terence Canfield. A most important day. It's all right. I have to get up anyway. Lots to do. Yeah. I'll make some coffee if you want. No, never mind. I'll get some on the way to the hospital. I'll probably be gone by the time you get home. I guess there's nothing more to say. I guess not. by Lorraine. appendectomy, Mr. Bradford. How's he doing? Couldn't be better as far as I can see. Keeps complaining he doesn't get enough to eat. Hmm. I suppose we can take him off the soft foods now. You can start him on regular as of this evening, would you please? Yes, sir. Word 300, Miss Harris. Yes, just a moment, please. It's for you, Doctor. Doctor Canfield. Oh, yes, Thelma. How are you? Your father? You can't arouse him. I'll be over right away. Would you please call my office and tell my nurse I'll be a little late getting in. Emergency. Yes, Doctor. May the annually fonejo Adenoi ele hai ele yevisai Sheriff wasi umisosi Dion MS Adenoi no san Vadenoi lokach Yehi shem Adenoi Neviro
Thelma. Your father was an old man, Thelma. Three strokes in eight months. We knew it had to come. We talked about it, remember? It was bound to happen, Thelma. It's better this way, believe me. If he lived, he would have been even more helpless. It would have been a terrible burden for both of you. You did everything you possibly could for him. It should be a comfort to you. A great comfort. Fourteen years. Taking care of him. He was all I ever had. An old man. Fourteen years. What does it all prove? You live a while and then you die. What does it all mean anyway? Maybe you had better ask him. Good morning, Doctor. Good morning, Mrs. Gomez. Sounds like another busy day. We've got a full house. Mr. Barrett and Mrs. Davidson and the children. Let me know when they bring in Mr. Kaufman's death certificate, will you? Yes, Doctor. Dr. Canfield's office. Oh, yes, Mrs. Sutter. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't think so, but just a moment, please. Mrs. Sutter about her arm. She wants a house call right away. I'll talk to her. Dr. Canfield, Mrs. Sutter. How are you feeling today? Good. Are you putting on the hot compressors like I told you? Fine. Well, I'm a little busy right now. Supposing I drop by a little later this evening, would that be all right? Yeah. Fine. Thank you, Mrs. Sutter. Goodbye. How are you? Mr. Barrett, you're next, please. We'll be with you in just a few minutes, dear. Dr. Canfield. The patient's waiting. Oh, thanks. Something the matter, Doctor? No, uh, I'll be right there. Doctor, Mr. Lucas is next, room two. All right. How do you do, Doctor? Henry, how are you? It's the old gallbladder again. I went off my dart. Happened huh? last week. Mm -hmm. Drove up to the ranch to see my folks, and Ma had dumplings for supper. A lot of that good country gravy, you know. I know. How long did the pain last? Oh, hour, hour and a half. Hurt quite a bit. All down through here with pains going around here to my back. Have you had any pain since then? Nothing. Doctor up there gave me a shot, advised me to see you when I got back. Those dumplings and gravy were mighty good. 
One thing I have to tell you, Henry. Stay on your diet and you'll stay out of trouble. We might as well face it. If you keep on having these attacks, we might have to talk about an operation. Now, in the meantime, if you have any more trouble, call me right away. Okay? You're the boss. Well, what's this I hear about you getting married, Henry? Yeah, last month. Wonderful girl, German girl. Fine cook. You'll have to come over for dinner some evening. She makes a fine dish of canadle. Canadle? What's that? Well, it's a sort of uh, dumplings with gravy. That ought to hold him for a while. Doctor? Mrs. Peterson again, huh? She called in a few minutes ago. Her husband cut his hand on a beer bottle again. She's coming right over. Oh, and Emma Barron called. Her little girl's much better. The fever's gone down. Will you check with Dr. Wiley when you get some time? See if you got that apartment for me? Yes, sir. Doctor, I know it's personal. About you and your wife, I mean. But I just want you to know I'm very sorry to hear it. Thank you, Mrs. Gomez. Doctor? Oh, I'm sorry. You'll have to wait in the reception room. The doctor will be with you in just a moment. It's my little boy, Andres. He's sick. Well, I'm sorry, but since this morning, he's so sick. Look. How long has he been this way? One hour, two hour. I mean, he began then, some coughing. Did you see him swallow anything? No. I not see him. He had my sewing basket. Maybe he swallowed something? Here, let me have him. Oxygen, please. Obstruction in the airways. Probably a foreign body of some kind. I hope it's high enough. You do something, Doctor. Would you wait outside, please? Can you take care of him? Come on. He'll be all right. You wait outside. Everything's going to be just fine. Almost completely obstructed. More cyanotic. Turning blue. What do you think? Tracheotomy, it's our only chance. Yes, Doctor. Doctor. Yes, doctor, coming right up. Size two, is that the one you wanted? Fine.
That's it. I'm glad we don't have these often. It's the first one I've had in a long time. Kids. They scare you to death sometimes. It's a wonder they live long enough to grow up. I don't understand. The thing is still in his throat? That's right, madam. There's no real danger, though. You see, we had to put a tube in his throat, right here. Your little boy was choking. And the first thing we had to do was to help him get some air. He's breathing through that tube right now. The next thing is to have the object, whatever it is, removed from his throat, taken out. The hospital, they know we are coming? A special nurse in an ambulance will be here in a few minutes. I've already called Dr. Tracy. He'll meet us at the hospital. He's a specialist in these cases. Thank you. Thank you very much. You help us. You help people. I try. It must make you feel very good. You must be happy. You must be a very happy man. Anything special while I was gone, Ms. Gomez? Mr. Franklin's on the phone, Doctor. Who? Mr. Franklin. Oh, oh, I'll talk to him. Dr. Canfield, Mr. Franklin. How's the stomach feeling today? Very little pain, huh? Good. Been pretty regular, have you? Fine. No, I wouldn't do that if I were you. I'd spend at least another day in bed and keep right on with those tablets. Yes. Fine. I'll be talking to you tomorrow, right? Okay. Goodbye. How's the little Ruiz boy? Oh, fine. It was just a piece of button. Fortunately, it was lodged high up in the airway. Not much trouble taking it out. Good. It's getting late. Do you want to have lunch first, or do you want to see the patients now? I've been waiting quite a while. I'd better see them now. Have the drugstore send up a sandwich and a glass of milk. And no mayonnaise on the sandwich, please. Too bad, George. Doug's still pretty busy? A little slow. His package ordered. Sorry, I couldn't get it over, sir. It's all right. No rush. How's the family? Fine. Still eating the groceries. <laughs> Blaise told me about you and Lorraine. Sure sorry to hear about it. A little too much to ask of her. Finally got under her skin, I guess. I suppose I can't blame her too much. Late hours all the time. Not much home life. She just got tired being married to a doctor. Say, uh, what about coming out with Blanche and me and having dinner tonight? Do you good? Afraid not, George. Got some house calls to make. Have to check with the hospital, too. Maybe Sunday, huh? Yeah. Well, excuse me. I guess I better be getting home. Talk to you tomorrow, huh? Good night, George. Hello? Oh, Mrs. Gomez? She's already left. Any message? You're welcome.
let me hang up your coat. Thanks. Busy day? Yeah, I'm pretty busy. Have you had your dinner? I got something on the way home. Would you like some coffee? Would you have some with me? I'll fix it. Lorraine. Well, I got as far as the station. But I didn't even get on the train. It will be different from now on, Lorraine, believe me. I won't take any new patients for a while. We'll spend the weekends together. Hello? Yes, this is Dr. Canfield. Are you sure? I see. As soon as possible. It's an OB. Mrs. Thompson is already in labor. Just about ready for delivery. I'm sorry, honey. She's an RH and I'm a little bit worried about her. Yes, doctor. I won't be long. Will you wait up for me? The coffee will be ready.